Welcome back, everybody, to more 2018 LCK Spring. My name is Valdez. With me is the ever so famous Papa Smithy. We're going to be jumping into the second map of the night. It is going to be Kongu Monster versus MVP going head to head in our second best of three of 2018. On paper, the stakes are different. We do not have two teams we expect to be vying for the top, but that's just our suspicion, Valdez. There is always the chance there is a breakaway success. MVP versus Kongdu could be a really interesting one because we're still seeing the meta settle on patch 8.1. A lot of innovation brought on our first set, and yet the innovation didn't lead to game victories for the side of Kingzone. We're going to understand what the standard meta is. Maybe we'll see now. Perhaps we will. Here is Suyun, our host, and let's introduce our two teams. <laughs> The monster is back here in the studio. Kongdu with a similar lineup, but not exactly the same, bringing in Raze as their main jungler. Yujun is going to be the substitute jungler now. And notably, their only sub Valdez as Guger, their previous support and captain, is no longer on the roster, so preferring secret as his support. Soul is still the crown jewel of this lineup. They play around their AD carry in this meta with Callistas and Cogmores running around. That would suit them just perfectly, but I imagine they will be on the ban list. Very interesting to see Raze back as a starter, was on Jin Air as their jungler last season. Jungle sub as of course, ended up being Omti more often than not. See what he can make done in support role. His most impressive champion has been the Elise, but Elise right on the corner of the meta right now. And let's go ahead and introduce our second team of the night. MVP coming back here in 2018. They had a pretty impressive spring split for the team that they are, but then Summer completely fell off, looking to just turn the page and make a new MVP for 2018. Speaking of a new MVP for 2018, we have a substitute to the power of friendship. It's still holding true. Maha still will be starting, but Pilot, seasoned AD carry, also of Jin Air fame, but most recently failed attempts in the EUCS makes his return to the Korean scene. Will not be starting, they go with Maha to start things off, but that means that Maha will have a competitive substitute for want game time as well. Yeah, and for you guys who have been longtime fans of MVP, you might notice that Maha has lost a lot of weight. Kind of reminds me of when Bang lost a lot of weight. Another 80 carry just uh, cutting the pounds, cutting the sugar and uh, being a healthy pro gamer. And good to see um, another the uh, thing that I noticed is the Kongdu Monster players, they have way too many patches. Just look, <laughs> look at their uh, jersey when you look at it once again. It's uh, it's covered in patches, guys. I also have awkward news for their AD carry. You need to get fed to get ahead as an AD carry, so he's going to mm. have to start piling on the CS. They're going to have a victory here, MVP. But you're right, looking trim. Some MVP fans. Ian had some interesting things said on the MVP uh, Twitter that you should definitely look at yourself <laughs> about his potential waifu, I guess, is the best way to yes. talk about it. Um, definitely, for <laughs> sure. De definitely go check that out, guys. It was, was pretty funny to see. Let's take a look at the key points for this matchup. Finally, this first sixth man. And they are talking about Pilot, the substitute uh, AD carry player behind Maha. A lot of experience played in the LPL. That was in the LSPL from memory. EULCS was in the EUCS. So not necessarily at the top of competition, but in Europe and China. And did his merry rounds back after his stint abroad here. 
Whether he'll start or not is going to be a very interesting thing to track to me. Maha is a direct upgrade in a lot of areas, but he's had some time to get back to Korea. He potentially has the ability to shock cause. He is an older player, but MVP, this roster that's only ever had a nominal sub for Rift Rivals last year, you remember, otherwise always truly having a five-man roster. Just that unbroken uh, match record, just the fact that they will eventually, you'd imagine, play pilot will put together a lot of games in a row that will be broken as in terms of a streak. And we're also going to have a look at the mid lane matchup. Edge and Ian, some of these up and coming mid laners, but neither of which has really jumped up into the upper echelon of Korea. Yeah, you know, you can see his record here, four and one. I, I assume that is against head to head. Kong the Monster. Um, looking pretty good for him so far. I guess the KDA is higher for Edge, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Damage per minute here higher for Ian. Um, We'll see if his waifus can help him out with some wins here tonight. And he's looking for a new waifu because he was kind of thought of as this Syndra only player. He's tried to say in interviews off season that he has other champions that he can bring forward in solo queue. He's definitely been trying some things. I saw everything but Syndra in his solo queue account. Yeah. So hopefully he's got I some mean, new stuff to show us. It's probably going to be Zoe, Rise, and Azir. But hope springs eternal, Valdez. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, some of these other teams that aren't in the upper echelon of LCK. You definitely see some weird stuff, some new trying things that they, they want to bring into the scene. Doesn't always work out, but can be fun at times. By the way, nobody's playing Syndra. You were talking about Syndra. Nope. She has totally fallen off. Everybody's got a stopwatch now. It's like, well, there are just better picks at this point. I mean, the bugs were fixed on 8.1, but needs a bit of a buff rather than just a bug fix to make it work. So Syndra on the sidelines. What has Ian got new? That's kind of the thing we're going to find out. Yeah. Probably. Um, I, we were talking about Zoe. She didn't get banned or picked at all. Weird, in right? The, in those first two games. I was like... Definitely going to be permaband. Not going to see this at all. Maybe it gets picked if it's not. Um, but uh, Orin and Zoe. I, I really don't understand it. Like it's just so strong. We saw it in LPL just wreck face. Like she was just all over them. And uh, in, in solo queue, it's banned all the time. It's one of the big picks that we keep talking about even after the nerf. It's super strong, but we just. Haven't seen it, and uh, I think we're going to see it in the second match. Yeah, I don't think that's going to necessarily be a patch long trend. That was just a match trend. Sometimes you get really in the head, the next level, next levels, and some of those popular meta picks fall away. So I'm just excited to see you know, what shakes out of the meta from today. I think we'll be learning something new every day as we're going to see uh, 10 teams debut over the course of two and a half days worth of match days. So a lot to work out, and right now more questions than answers. Maha looking happy, looking ready to go. Everybody's in the lobby, so we should be starting shortly, guys. Shouldn't have too many delays. And as I do say that, it looks like we are just about ready to go, guys. So hold on to your seats. We got Kong Du Monster versus MVP coming to you guys for our second match of LCK 2018 Spring. Let's hop into Pick and Bath. Off to a good start here. Already see Malzar banned off, as well as the Alistar and Sejuani, all picks that we should be expecting to be banned at this point. Yeah, Tank Jungle has been banned a lot in the first series. I thought that was about trying to get in the head of Ambition if it was Peanut. Certainly didn't work given the result of that series, but Sejuani, the one Tank Jungle, it seems it's getting a lot of respect still. Jarvan can, of course, go the tank route as well. Wasn't a damage Jarvan from Ambition. Was Tank on the day, and the Azir respect ban from Ian. Okay, so Edge. Giving the respect where he feels like credit's due. If you look at the most played recently, Azir was right up there for Ian. And of course, we know there's a standard meta pick. Will Zoe and Orn go unbanned? Certainly at least one, as we're waiting to see the final ban here from MVP. Oh, there's going to be that Ezreal. We saw what Ruler could do with that. They ban it against Soul. Maybe another respect ban there, as well as that Kalista. And it's Soul. And this there man loves his hyper carry. We said Kalista and Kogma will be banned. They went for a bit more lane presence, banning away the Ezreal. But now the Cogmore comes here and raising up the Cogmore. The Juggermore style is one that Kongnu Monster played through thick and thin. Even in their run towards I Am Kiongi final, they were running as much Juggermore as they could a couple of years ago. So no surprise with the Cogmore first pick. Yeah. Don't think he's going to be quite on the level of ruler, solo queue, you know, everything that I've been hyping up earlier today. But he's still a fantastically skilled. Uh, AD carry, and I can't wait to see what they build uh, around this Kog'Maw. We already saw some earlier success out of Rise today. 
And we do see that Ian is going to be picking that up, okay. as well as Nidalee here for Beyond. Very interesting. Beyond was another one of these players, like Spirit, like Peanut last season, who would play Nidalee in solo queue, but would never actually put it into competitive play. We'll be drafting it here. Peanut left a, le left a lot to be desired, so seeing if Beyond can make it work, be interesting to track. And yeah, with the Zero and Malzahar banned away, it was like Rise is very much the safe, blind, pickable mid laner. You would have thought it was Zoe, but Maybe Zoe well, won't look completely over. All right, first LCK yep. Zoe for Edge. Edge seems to think that it is Zoe, and I can't blame him for saying that. She is so oppressive, uh, especially when she gets far ahead. Her Qs just nuke everybody at some point, and uh, lots of mobility. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty overpowered. Probably going to be like a lot. probably going to be a two threat comp here. You see Tom Kench. They're going to start building around the Cogmore. You'd expect. May even consider a Shen man, another big tank band, if you're MVP in the next round. If you see Nidalee, early domination is probably the right way to go, but instead, they're going to use Nidalee as more of an enchanter, more about giving the attack speed and heals. As they're going to be going for a Twitch, so maybe fighting artillery with artillery here for the side of Maha. Pilo, welcome to MVP. We got a fan here of MVP there in the middle. He's probably watching in the back, so he'll see it, even though he's not starting here in game yeah. one. We do have Kazakhs banned out here. No jungle pick just yet for Kog'Maw, so they do take that away. Uh, trying to ban out very defensive supports to help Twitch get through the laning phase. We see Braum already taken away, and a Shivana ban here by MVP. It is sort of champion that if you hit a late game team fight with uh, protect the Kog'Maw comp and a Shivana, as both a threat and also a tank, you can understand it's actually going to be Kongnu Monster banning away the Shen, so both teams kind of Unsure where this draft will shake out fully, as we've only seen the AD carry of the bot lane and also the mid lane selected by Kongnu Monster. So maybe we'll just be Kogmo as a threat rather than a protection. Tank support meta gives rise to Jano as a point we made earlier. Looks like it won't be the support brand. It won't be something crazy from MVP. We stock standard with Max on the Jano. Kind of disappointed, to be honest. I wanted to see Max pull out something crazy, right? You, you see Kog'Maw, you see Zoe, maybe a Blitzcrank, you know, something like that. But not tonight, it seems. Maybe a little bit later on in the series. We'll have to wait. But we do see Jarvan picked up by Raze. Or at least it should be Raze. I don't see too much top Jarvan anymore. This is in 2017. Final see what pick do here. Orn available, a blind pick top available, and Roach. Usually a tank role player in his own right, so probably no surprise there. Lot of tanky front line for the two two threats we mentioned. The moment you saw Zoe Cogmore, you had to think you could plug and play at random tanks in front of two very high damage uh, carries, but also different types of damage. You got burst damage from Zoe, consistent damage from the Cogmore. Orn is left up intentionally, and Alawi counter pick. It's the first ever competitive Alawi in Korea. It has never been picked in the history of the LCK. This is going to be fun to watch. I, I cannot wait to see what he can do on Alawi ADD, one of these big names for MVP. Did well in spring, summer, eh, not so much. Famous for weird stuff like Scion, uh, picks that he would get purposely banned just only against him that nobody else was playing. And he's going to hope right yeah. here that his new weird pick that has to be perma banned is the Alawi. Mm -hmm. In the Demacia Cup, there was Alawi support. This is certainly going to be an Alawi top lane, a very strong into pure tanks. Alawi. It's that bill, and with the Ignite, though, seems like there's going to be unsealed Spellbook coming through, also from the Orn, much like we saw in the first series. With the Ignite, there's some kill pressure, but uh, anyone who's played solo, especially in Korea, knows you don't get that gank right. A 1v2 double kill is possible oh, yeah. for an Alawi. Definitely after level 6, so they're going to be looking to hit her fast earlier on in the game if they do want to go for that gank. Jarvan level 3 on the blue side, perhaps. We will see Raze going for that, but these pro gamers know just as well as we do, and we'll see what MVP can do to try to prevent that from happening. We finally do get to see Zoe on the side of Kongu Monster, and that is another Nidalee out beyond an Alawi in the top lane. Should be a fun first game to start off this matchup. It's a very different texture to the draft from the previous series, so I'm really fun to see some of this stuff come together. I'll discuss the MVP comp in-game. It's very different to what we've seen. Not a traditional one, but that's kind of the MVP way. I want this MVP, the one that tries different things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But MVP always fun on the rift. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what happens. But 
the first thing you guys are going to see is two players taking off their headsets, and you know what that means. We it's the pause time. A pause. Pause issue to start off the second match of the night. And, uh, well, at least you get to see Kongdu Monsters uh, outfits there, their jersey. They do have a lot of patches on Which it. Which probably means a lot of sponsors, right? It's probably a good thing, even if it's not the most uh, attractive yeah. team jersey we've seen before. One of, the, one of the patches is a hospital. That's the that's the one thing I noticed. I'm like, well, they're they're just getting everybody on board the the Kongdu hype train. Cosmetics. Zowie is a uh, monitor brand. Yeah, Nutravail was the last one. Nutra, I think it was Nutra Value. Oh, my apologies. Nutravail sounds like I shout don't know. shout out to Nutra Value. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that is, never heard of you, but now people have. As they got a cosmetics brand in there. I just need to know, is Nike a shirt sponsor or not? There is a Nike logo, but it's not a patch. So hard to say. We're getting information I, uh, from production. There's a, a bit of a sound know. issue. It's not a skin issue this time. Okay, okay. You're going to have to recap some of the different issues we've had at Spo TV yeah, in the past. Uh, for sure. We've had a lot of them. I want to see how they present it. Okay, the volume was too loud. <laughs> that's, that's what the issue was, guys. The volume was too loud. They had to pause. Okay, here we go. Going into game number one of Kongdu Monster versus MVP. Crowd cheer for MVP. Yeah, thunderous. They got a lot of people here in the stadium looking out for them. Small point. Actually, in live, Ian was forced to use his cleanse, hit by a sleepy trouble bubble, and saw an entourage following and had to cleanse. A very early cleanse there. Yeah. You never want to get hit by the STB, man. It's just not, not good news for you. You should uh, be careful <laughs> with that particular shortening. Yeah. Uh, Let's call so, it trouble bubble. That. Trouble bubble? STB and also <laughs> just saying bubble because Nami's in the right, game yeah, yeah, yeah. makes it tricky. So we'll go with trouble bubble trouble or sleepy bubble. bubble. Yeah, Nami's bubble is just normal bubble. Sleepy this trouble this is also trouble, a different trouble, issue. Bu sleepy trouble, wow. That's when you can't <laughs> sleep. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. That's <laughs> exactly what I thought of. Um, Hard hitting commentary for <laughs> Kongdu Monster versus MVP. Hard hitting leash actually for ADD here. He's lingered around the red buffs so he would have two passive spawns and then cool. use W on to get the hit. Every time this happens, I worry that the tentacles yeah. will randomly hit for the last <laughs> hit, but not to happen here. Sometimes those tentacle man, this they, is big. they just go out of control. But you'll notice that Maha and Max haven't shown. They actually stayed in the brush because they weren't yeah. leashing on the bot side. The moment you see they're at full health and mana, you do uh -oh. know is, oh, this Sleepy is interesting. Trouble bubble, and he is going to be gone, no doubt. First blood to edge on Zoe at two minutes into the game. Oh boy, he already burned his cleanse, so all he could do is flash and you got a Jarvan level two gank, you're not getting out of that one. Ian was just too confident. He felt there was no way a level two gank was coming in. But with cleanse down, edge loaded the needle. The EQ from there was trivial. Really nice kill from the Ooh. side of Kongdu Monster. Great reintroduction. We're gonna see the replay. Last hits the minion. I meant there was that small gap there. It doesn't matter. EQ into the electrocute proc. Enough damage. Too easy for the side of Kongdu Monster and Yep, Ian's gonna have to go back to the drawing board on that one. Good start for our good friend Zoe. Um, a pretty easy uh, prediction by Edge, I would say. You know, the Rise is gonna step forward and auto the creep. So you know that, okay, right when he does that, I can move over and Sleepy Trouble Bubble. And after that, you're just pretty screwed. So nice setup. Already a good start for Raze and Edge. We'll see what Raze wants to do after that. Not focusing on any early Alawi ganks or anything like that. Probably had something to do with the cleanse being burned. There is so much crap in Ian's inventory. He has so wow. many items. <laughs> it's almost six item rise. We're And it's only three minutes into the <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, so many things. But down the control ward, starting to. Yeah. Doesn't have uh, Klepto. That was just, of course, got the early back in yeah. because he was dead. So First time you play with Klepto, you're like, what do I do with all this stuff? <laughs> Max How do I use all these these buttons this early on in the game? Max is the first person not to visit the Relic Shield start. Just going to be going for into the Ancient Coin route. 
Does mean less sustain for the side of Maha, but does have the shields. First time in Korea we're seeing Jana post nerf, so since last year, so of course the shield cooldown much longer at early levels. Waiting to see the keystones. I missed them during the loading, but after I, I saw a lot of unsealed spellbook. That was kind of the big thing here. Yeah, just focusing on them now. Even unsealed spellbook on edge. So it feels like it's becoming the premier choice on basically every mid laner. But Maha has it here as well. So maybe that teleport strategy is going to continue coming up here. Yeah, maybe it's not all just about the pushing. It's just about having non-stop presence in the lane. Just literally no time that you're not going to be there if you get that early teleport. We'll see what he does want to do with that a bit later on. Generally, you do want the heal anyway. Ian still does not have his flash, and you can see that raise is sticking around. Sleepy Trouble Bubble is hit, and that's going to be a nice big nuke. Down goes Ian with the ignite, but he will not actually go down. Just gets hit by that big damage and has to back out of lane. It still tells the story. One full burst, one rotation is about 70% of the health of the rise. Pushing up in the bot side as well. Hongdu Monster's presence on this map is impressive. The roaming is continuing. Uh -oh. They can hit a trouble bubble uh -oh. and beyond. He's dead. <laughs> I think he is going to be dead. Just waiting for him to leap. And just waiting until the exact last moment. They're going to oh, knock him up. Beautiful. Very nicely done by Edge and Raze to pick up that kill. Not much she could do. She was seen on award. She had no idea. But so, she goes. so well communicated as well. They don't lead with the trouble bubble because one of the walls was likely to tank it. Mm -hmm. Just EQ in as the Paddle Star comes through at the ward. Waited for him to start moving over. Beautiful stuff and Ray's making his debut on Kongdu Monster, showing great synergy oh, with yeah. his mid laner. Maybe Edge and Ray's will be a duo we can talk about because so far they've been on the same page. Yeah, maybe Kongdu Monster has a chance at playoffs. <laughs> All right, that's a bit too early over there. I'm going to rein you in here, Valdez. Come on. All now. right, I was, I was getting a little bit excited, you know. Kongdu Monster. Um, I used to be a big fan of MVP, actually, uh, especially after spring. I'm like, they have a lot of hidden potential, a lot of talent in their roster. But after summer, I, I kind of lost a bit of the hype. And to be honest, this game is not helping with that. So we'll see if they can pull it back. Uh, good start here for Kongdu Monster. You guys can see the runes for Edge. It's surprising to see Transcendence chosen, but I guess wants to hit 40% CDR as early as possible. A lot of minion dematerializes. Everything else pretty standard, though. What is with this minion dematerializer? Like, everybody is taking it now. I After that first series, now we have, like, four people in this game with it. I mean, one thing I think we should zoom out and talk about is, let's talk about a bigger thing. Look at how many people are primary or secondary uh, inspiration tree. Oh, yeah. At the side of Kongdu Monster, it's all five members looking down MVP. It's similar story. Max not going into that tree, but everyone else has some sort of inspiration tree going. It just lets you know the free boots, the dematerializes, the stopwatch. The amount of utility seems to outclass things like a little bit more damage on your spells from sorcery or the other trees. And the dominant tree, and it's one of those things where if there's not two better options, why not a dematerializer? especially around level six, especially in bot lane. If you get that faster level up from the dematerializer killing, say, a cannon minion, a cannon minion or a melee minion, that can be big enough to turn a fight. Yeah, it definitely can be. And no doubt we will be seeing some nerfs in the future. Okay. If, if something like this takes over this strongly, then, I mean, it's, it's going to get taken down a notch. No doubt. But uh, speaking of notches to be taken down, Zoe hits another trouble bubble. Forces that cleanse out. It's funny how if you just get hit by that ability, it's like, well, either you cleanse, you flash it, or you're dead, or you're out of lane. So Ian has had a, a rotten game so far. Oh, you have to again. say, yep, has to use the Zonia port from just a single trouble bubble. Ian's laning phase has just been appalling. After using cleanse so early, he's been completely just decimated in the mid lane. He's farmed decently, 12 CS behind. It's not great, obviously, but he's died. and been forced out of lane multiple times. But now the stopwatch is down. Now extra tools down. He has his flash back up, but he needs that summon to spell cooldown reduction because he's getting completely owned in mid. Yeah. I mean, we saw what the flash does for him in that first gank, right? It gets you just a little bit farther away from the Jarvan who kills you anyway. Speaking of. Speaking of that, exactly. Here we go. Down in the bottom lane, a four-man gank. Are they going to set it up, though? Looks like the answer is no. At the proto belt there, did edge, so thought it was the right time. They're not losing anything. Rice not pushing in mid lane. It's, last thing he's thinking about is pushing. He's just scared of being ganked once more. 
Raze and Edge have spent so much of this game just roaming around together. And the only person who's really unhappy is Roach, who has to deal with a pure 1v1 with no jungle attention against an allow. Yeah, I mean, they're they're sacrificing health for Roach, but he's Orin. I mean, he's he's going to do his job anyway. If he's down half item, <laughs> not as big of a deal compared to Zoe just demolishing your team. I feel like the team jungle proximity of Kongdu Monster to oh. mid lane is massive as ADD. Uh, you were speaking about this. He, it seems like he doesn't need any help. Roach gets the solo kill in the top lane. Orn versus Alawi. We'd love to see a replay of that one, Papa. That was out of context, very surprising. Orn can do <laughs> tremendous things. Full range spear hits from beyond. You need lane presence to make this Nidalee work. Peanut wasn't able after giving up a death early to make the Nidalee work earlier. And now beyond is dealing with roaming lanes in multiple areas from Kongdu Monster. And of all things, his Alawi being solo killed by an Orn. Let's watch the Reaper. I assume this was turret aggro. Two turret shots Just to start this up and then kill range from half health everything hits onto ADD apart from the one yeah. ability flashes and then he's dead so that's just a mistake from ADD you need to know your tower range is down to the frame because Alawi has so many different ways to draw turret aggro with all the tentacles poor play from ADD after poor play earlier from Ian yeah you know it's the first day of the season it's the first match of the season for MVP but uh turning into a bit of a nightmare first 10 minutes yeah, and he even ulted, but there were no tentacles in place. He didn't have the link onto Roach. There was just no DPS that was going to come out. And he's like, oh, crap. And he just tries to flash away, but already the Orin still had his ultimate available. So what are you going to do? What is that cleaver, though? Very nice first shot in for him. So at least he's able to do a lot of damage. And that presence when he returns, but level advantage for Roach. With no jungle attention, Roach is going even. We saw Smeb struggle on Fiora versus this Orin, and... Not too much difference here for ADD, but getting him low, looking for that kill here. Gonna try turret dive, or at least consider it. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Orin has a, a nice bit of wave clear, so he can get rid of those back ranged minions quite easily. Uh, it's gonna force out that back. You can see that he's actually running Ignite Teleport at this point, doesn't need the flash. Uh, can get back in the lane very, very quickly. Still has the ability to fight straight up with the Alawi with the Ignite. There's, there's a reason, guys, why Unsealed Spellbook will just not stay sealed. We should just talk about another mastery choice that's uh, kind of interesting to discuss here. Guardian Janna is actually taking, it's not Summoner Area, which was the more common choice. Not going to be looking for any W trades, but also extra shielding from that area. It's going for pure tankiness, and obviously early game shield can be relevant, but usually you think of it on tank support. So going down the tank tree as Janna, not something you see commonly. That's an interesting idea. Putting all of his eggs in the Kog'Maw basket. Just, uh, or not Kog'Maw, but Twitch. It's uh, kind of what you want to do with the hyper carry. So taking it a step further. Seems like the farm down in the bottom lane is exactly even. So those guys just farming down with the relic shields and all that good stuff in the bot lane. Not the most exciting bot lane on this patch, guys. We don't, I mean, the observer isn't really showing it too much as well because we kind of all know that, uh, there should be a lot more action in the mid, in the jungle, and even in top lane at this point. Edge's got so much latitude after all the earlier successful ganks. Now going for another roam down bot lane. Beyond's here as well. Yeah. He's got that extended through the terrain. Does miss. It's a minion afterwards with the zone. So I want to talk a little bit. If we have a lull on the action, Roach's never going to have a lull on the action. He's leaning against Alawi. We've all mm -hmm. felt these feels. About what? The team comp from MVP was supposed to do. May not be a big fact, just using ult for wave clear is Roach. He's just kind of giving up the lane as he understands. Uh, Ian was also rotating top side, so trying to be safe. The, the team comp theory here, because normally you don't see Twitch with a Nidalee jungle, a carry top laner, kind of pseudo carry tank top laner, a Janna support instead of a tank support. Usually you see more of a beefy front line, so similar to what Kongdu Monster has. Mm -hmm. The team comp from MVP here is very skirmish heavy. It's very much about winning lanes and then rotating around with the Rise. It can play the 1-3-1 super fast and super well with the Rise ultimate and also the speed of Nidalee, Twitch, and Janna getting around the map. So it's a skirmish Twitch comp, not necessarily a 5v5 team fighting uh, Twitch comp, but when you fall this far behind and there's item advantages, you can't even really skirmish. And the only good news story so far from MVP is that AD is at least pushing in the top side. We'll get the turret soon. I mean, Ma has to ult just for wave clear, so 
lane control and other areas absent for MVP. You can see the response here. They know that ADD is pushing, but now we got Raze and Edge looking for a gank and top is going to be pushed back as they are spotted, but very active once again since the beginning of the game have Edge and Raze been traveling as a team, at least relieving a bit of pressure up in the top side. And it kind of, it, just that action, just that grouping from the mid laner and jungle kind of counters what MVP wants to do. They might be able to steal a Mountain Drake under the nose, or there is blue pings onto the objective, and for now at least MVP starting to pull away. I see actually an ult in here. Okay, it's gonna be a contest from Kongdu Monster. Yeah, they're coming in, Raze and Secret. They take over the dragon. It is four on three right now. Kog'Maw a little bit too far behind, but you can see that at least they do stop the dragon attempt. But Kongdu Monster not ready to take the fight because Kong or Kog'Maw was not with them. And so at least they stopped the dragon here. Just no free lunches, no free objectives to the side of MVP when Kongdu Monster is winning. But again, the takeaway should be MVP just like King Zone in game one don't have a comp that can win 5v5 fights, but Kongdu Monster are running the game here. It's a huge <laughs> burst comes on to beyond. If it's the same scenario we're seeing in front of our eyes, all the gold is going on to Kongdu early. They have the team fight outscale as well. You can't make these clever plays with an invisible twitch or Ryze ulting him because Ryze is dying under his turret half the time and then the game just scales away from MVP anyway. So Kongdu Monster, with that smart grouping between Rays and Edge, has removed that early skirmish win condition from MVP. And now MVP are happy if they're getting four minion waves onto people in terms of farming. Any more than that, it's kind of impossible. Yeah, the game is slipping away from them quite fast. Another Mountain Drake does get contested, this time taken by Kongdu, as First Blood Turret also goes over to Kongdu, just the bottom lane. I saw that Secret did stay with the Kog'Maw and didn't give the full gold away, so they want to get Secret a bit farmed up as well. Wanted to keep him nearby just in case they wanted to go for a, a dive at the same time. Notable that Maha also has not used his spell book for anything creative, just sitting on the heel for now. He did get the teleport the one time, yeah. and then he switched back, so it's like you get the unsealed spell book, you teleport once, so you stay even with your enemy, and then you go back to the healer. And yet it still feels worth, right? That's kind of the intriguing thing, is yeah. that the flexibility that it gives. I guess options are the sort of things that Korean teams have always been the best at abusing. Question oh and passivity is beyond all EQ hits. Well, uh, Zoe misses everything, so I guess they'll finish her off a little bit later as the Cataclysm does come down. Now they're looking for Max as well. Sleeping Trouble Bubble is not going to hit onto... Actually, it does. The zone hits Maha in the back. After they take the Janna out, they're going to continue going. Another miss, Sleeping Trouble Bubble. And it looks like this time with the teleport coming in from Rise, they will back off. But that's another two kills going over to Kongdu. I mean, Kongdu is basically in a shooting gallery situation, throwing skill shots on edge. No fear at all of recourse from the side of MVP. I mean, Nidalee's not going to be able to CC anyone. The Rise is running in the opposite direction. It's going to be another free objective. Sure, ADD is getting farm and eventually going to start taking turrets. But the pace at which the four members are abusing the situation means soon there's going to be lanes. It's going to be just like Rascal in the last game where he was fed on Vlad. He could split push on Vlad, but there was never any vision to split yeah. push. We're close to that already here, Valdez. May even be farther as this game is scaling out of control. I mean, you can see already haunting guys picked up by Zoe. She's going back. She just picked up teleport too from the item drop. So we're going to take another look at this. Some missed spells onto Beyond. Turns out not really mattering because the Sleepy Trouble Bubble zone hits max anyway. And so it allows them to pick up two kills here. Yeah, and the EQ range there. I thought the EQ would not actually hit the Nidalee. Beyond was probably surprised as well. Edge flashing in, looking for more. Had an extra flash because of his W passive, of course, but couldn't get any kills from it. It's just a sign of the times. Kongdu Monster can go in with Reckless Abandon. The allow is a complete non-factor. Isn't going to be wanting to be teleported into any of these fights. Roach is staying higher and higher health and higher and higher health in some of these trades. That's also a bit discouraging for the side of MVP. You can see Beyond trying to come down here and make something happen onto the Ore and maybe just trying to push him out of lane so they can get some gold onto their team with this turret. But look at Roach, he forces them out with his ultimate. We got a TP coming in now just to force them back even farther. And Beyond just kind of sitting down here wasting his time. I'd like to introduce you to Orn, where I understand <laughs> the theory of Alawi. I've, I've met him, Papa. He's uh, he's a very nice fellow. Maybe too many times, as Ian has spent, as we said, the majority of this game being zoned away from things, loses his turret here. Orn has so much ranged farming. 
Tanks don't normally have range from him. You think of, say, Mundo. He can throw out a cleaver, but otherwise kind of screwed. He has Q, he has W, he can even ult waves like he's a rumble. He has so many ways to delay. So even though there's an inevitability about the turret going down eventually, if that eventually is an extra minute and a half than another tank, like a Shen, for example, can hold up his turret, well, guess what? They're going to get more objectives with the four-man rotation. So much farm on everyone else. That turret is still up, and this... Uh, Elder Dragon, not Elder Dragon, I should say, Rift Herald is not. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was actually really fast, too. Uh, they got that down with just three members, Zoe helping out a little bit there at the end. But yeah, Roach is just sitting here, buying up his items, just uh, trying to stay alive against the Alawi. His, his turret is never going down. Couldn't even take the top turret as well, stays alive. And uh, Ongu Monster really putting on a show. After seeing this game, I almost feel like it might be a quick day in the, in the form of two 2-0s two tonight. Not really what I was expecting. I thought at least one of these series would go to two and one. I mean, the betting markets for a Kongdu Monster 2-0, you know, a squad that has what? Maybe four match wins in three seasons at the highest level uh, in yeah. Korea would be pretty insane. But they've certainly come in well prepared. We said the same thing about KSV's ability to play to their strengths. Playing around Seoul is usually the only way that Kongdu Monster found success. But Edge and Ray's, a new duo, playing their first competitive series together showed so much synergy and I think honestly that first trouble bubble into return kill on rise set the tone and Raze has never stopped up he's been pushing further and further forward he's happy to engage his accuracy is on point and reinventing himself first in the jungle for a couple of games for Jin Air but now it's maybe even a starter on the side of Kongdu Monster it's a new lease of life it's core JJ-esque only one game certainly but a great first game for Raze yeah, definitely is. I mean, he, he was the starter coming into today. I think after this first day, his synergy with Edge, they're just going to be like, OK, you're the, you're the starter for probably the rest of spring. We'll, we'll get a, a couple of shots to uh, Yujun, no doubt, especially in some of the uh, against some of the weaker teams. But we'll have to wait and see if he does come out. So far, this game is looking like a total stomp, even though the gold is close. Soul is getting out of control. The Orn is doing just fine. Let's see what Alawi can do in their first team fight that's really what I'm curious about here. Let's see if they face check her. Nope, they will not. They had the vision there, smartly done. Lots of respect being shown by Kongdu. They're like, okay, you burn teleport on ADD. All right, we're just not gonna fight you. And so now Orn, he gets total control in the bot lane. He can begin pushing, and Kongdu Monster don't lose anything. And unfortunately, Valdez, the moment you say, what can Ilawi do in this team fight initiation? That's already things that Alawi's not set up for. She's dominant if you're playing around her as Trouble Bubble does hit on Twitch, has Cleanse now that he went into on his unsealed spellbook to get out of it. It's one of those things where the kid is not set up for team fight. May I introduce, reintroduce Orn, the god of team fights, <laughs> as an alternative. Oh he god, now has teleport again. advantage. <laughs> yeah, he's got Flash too. Uh, just gonna set this up. Tries to knock Maha, but forces that flash out. Now he has joined the team. ADD still awkwardly on the side on that Alawi. Really not doing anything so far in this game. Even Roach throwing out an ultimate, forcing a flash, forcing everybody back, and helping them get another turret is being more impactful on this game so far. Orn is just, his kit is so, so overloaded. Yeah. Uh, if you try to describe why Orn is good, the amount of things you can talk about, his permanent laning phase with his passive, yeah. three ranged abilities to farm with, best initiation of any champion, non-committal initiation, he just presses <laughs> R, and if either side hits, he's pretty happy. If he hits both, he's a god, I guess. Yeah. He's so, so powerful. The fact that we've seen him go through picks and bans multiple times today is already very surprising, and it doesn't really matter if he has a bad laning phase, because he gets a couple of items, he starts clearing, he delays, and. He will be the team fight general yeah. as well. Orn is so, so strong. It's it's always fun when you jump into a cast and it's a, a new patch and everything. And you, you've seen a little bit other regions on solo queue. And, but you got to wait until you're fully acclimated to the patch and you fully understand it. And coming into this one, I'm like, we're going to see Orn. We're going to see Zoe either picked or permabanned all the time. Didn't see it earlier on in the day. But today, this is what I was expecting, right? The team that gets both Orn and Zoe to just totally stomp. And 
so far that's what we've been seeing here. Hasn't really been the only reason, obviously. You know, Jarvin coming in and with Joey. Why, it's it's very nice. And I love that you add that last point because let's consider, you know, you didn't watch this match, which it's Kongnu Monster versus MVP. You're going to stay up for the first match. Maybe it's late where you are. You come into the post-match thread and you're like, well, of course, they got Zoe and Orin, GG from yeah. Pick Ban. <laughs> and maybe that's what the game would have gone if it was a conventional game. This has not been conventional, Valdez. As we uh, watch ADD try to do his worst and not going to get too much out of it, this game was really more about Edge and Rays playing super well in the early game, and then everything else cascaded, and then GG lost to pick ban. But yeah. I really want to take away that Edge and Rays as a duo are very impressive together, but also that Orn and Zoe are pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, you got to hand it to Orn himself. I, I don't feel like Roach was super outplaying. It was a nice outplay to take advantage of ADD's mistake to get that solo queue early, or kill, rather, early. Uh, it definitely did help him in getting those items earlier to stave off the push from Alawi, but basically just had that Orn in the lane that just never died and always cleared out. Definitely would have helped out uh, compared to, say, like a Gangplank who's having a lot of trouble stopping the push or something like that. And what you can say about Roach is he didn't die. You know, he had a terrible laning phase because it was Ilawi and no one was going to gank for him because they were everywhere else. He didn't die. He, took, he got a chance to all in and pick the right time to all in. He did what was expected of him and better. So credit to Roach, who has struggled at the LCK level in the past. So Oren does paper over some of the weaknesses of some laners. If you're going to play a tank, he's certainly the one you want to play. But MVP it does feel inevitable already. It would be an insane game if MVP was able to pick up the win here. I think Max stealing Baron with, say, a tornado needs yeah. to happen. And then and then a couple more things. I, I would love to see that first thing. Uh, he's that, he's that stolen top it off the entire with day. crazier things before. True. Uh, you guys can take a look at the damage. doesn't really tell the full story. I, oh, I think looking at Ryze's Max damage. Max in range. Max's damage is hilarious, by the way. Here it comes! It could actually happen about us! The tornado! Oh, he oh, actually on. got it! What a, what a beast! He went in there and he stole the Baron! I was kind of fooling around and I'm like, oh, this is never going to happen. But he actually did get it. And ADD wasn't even there. Didn't teleport down. Won't get the turret, though, even with the Baron buff minions. You thought you were having a prank. Perhaps Kongdu Monster did as well. <laughs> but this will extend a game that was looking like a guaranteed victory for Kongdu Monster. Let's take another closer look at this. How does Beyond get in? He goes to the side, flashes over, and then instinctually presses Smite. They already had a control ward in there. Kongdu Monster focused on DPSing down the Baron instead of clearing it. Understandable. In that scenario, it was a very unlikely occurrence. But Beyond dies for the cost of Baron, and a new lease on life for MVP. That's pretty huge. I mean, he's down to 0 and 3, but if they win this game, he would have done his job, right? He, he had a pretty terrible early game, but stealing the Baron can get a lot of teams back in. So let's see what they can do. ADD is going to begin pushing in with his Baron buff in the bottom lane. A TP coming in, or no, that's actually just a Baron recall out of Janna. Confusing me a little bit there. But uh, Ray's coming on over, thinking about a gank in the bottom lane, but ADD will respect that and back off. Sending multiple members into the lane where Alawi with Baron buff occurs because that's the one time where Roach is like, okay, guys, like I was doing my best against Alawi, but the Baron buff puts it a bit over the edge. Speaking of edge, that able does. to just take the turret in top side, 50 health. Oh, come on, minions. Come on. Uh, They're getting distracted about <laughs> this. Oh, well, we got some weakened minions. Maybe one more will get close enough if edge does not save it. Oh. He's going to save it. Uh, he is. Nicely done. MVP were hard done by there. They were definitely hard done by. <laughs> Minions got distracted. A bit like Raze on his smite finger, I guess you could say, yeah. around the Baron. Now, this is definitely not the beginning of the end just yet. It is a good moment for MVP. It does allow them to stabilize, get some map pressure. We talked about it in picks and bans. Team fight wise, they're in Struggle Street as bot lane. ADD alone against Roach. Now he's against three. He is going to get knocked up. Make that four. Make that five as Edge comes in. Guardian Angel can only save you for so long. Although, what the hell gets out of there with the, the warp away, the realm warp from Rise? Ian saving his life. AD played that well. He held his flash until after he was rezzed from Guardian Angel. Ian obliged with an ultimate. Great escape there coming through on the side of MP. Another feel good moment. Now, they are a 
good siege comp with the Baron buff. So turrets in a 5v5 are possible unless one of those bubbles hits. Yeah, Edge hasn't really been too on point with those after the beginning of the game. Creating flash for flash, but here we go now. Orange ultimate hits up three, and you can see Maha in the back immediately gets taken out, and the dab is coming out from Edge. We'll take out ADD. Ian is alone against four other members. It's a double kill for Roach on the Orn, and so much for feel good out of MVP because they're not feeling pretty good after that team fight. And the team comp is set up for early game skirmishing and then back up Siege. Unfortunately, a gold disadvantage when you're sieging means that the engage guard himself, Orn, calls for that forage guard. They're gonna lose the inhibitor. Still 25 seconds on Ian. They might go for more, they might even Ro go for the end. Roach has his ult again. Of course he, he does, he he's Orn! What is going on? How low? I didn't realize the cooldown was that low. This is a bit out of control. Yeah, they're gonna go for the end here. Not a single kill, not a single tower, and not a <laughs> single dragon on the side of MVP. This is looking like a perfect game coming out of Kongdu to start off 2018. Different type of perfect game. A Baron was stolen, but it is not reflected on the top of the screen. True. I'll leave the rest of the world to doubt the veracity of the perfect game. But if you're a Kongdu monster fan, if you're one of these players who have felt this pressure of playing on the LCK stage three times before and wilted every time. This is such a big moment for them. The mid lane duo of Edge and Raze had better synergy than any of Punch's previous attempts to pilot himself as the jungler. Roach on the Orn played very well. They got the power picks, but it was the synergy that impressed me the most between their mid and jungle. Otherwise, from that, MVP, they tried a crazy comp. After they gave up a couple of early kills, they could never really act towards their win conditions, and they were steamrolled. From the get-go and to the end, especially by that Orn, I think when you're giving up two of those tippy-top god-tier picks in Orn and Zoe, uh, you're going to have a, a tough time anyway. But let's take a look at the replays and the highlights from game number one. If you go for the Janna, you don't have Braum, you don't have Yasuo, you don't have a way to answer the call of the Forge God. Another great one here, Orin assassinates Twitch because that's just how <laughs> he rolls after hitting all of his CC onto him. And there's a gold lead, there's a superior team fight advantage. Snowballing, smart pathing, great play. Kongdu Monster, the Baron wasn't stolen, it'd be the immaculate game. Yeah, everything was used by Janna to try to keep Maha alive on the Twitch, but it was just not enough. You're, you're not getting away from that Orin. Let's go to the game facts. A different uh, type of website here on Spo, but it is 29 minutes and 30 seconds to get the almost perfect game. The Baron was stolen. I know we didn't get to speak Although about it much in the game. It's not on the game facts, which I don't really understand. I know we didn't get to speak about it during the game, but let's talk about Orin for a second here. First time we're talking oh, we about didn't? Orin tonight. Okay. <laughs> he actually did the most damage on his team by a lot, so that was that was Orin. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was Orin versus Alawi the entire game, so. You can see how Alawi's damage is more than three times the number of Twitch, and Rise is more like than not, the e not even. Rise and Italy are like not even in the game. They have almost the same damage as Tom Kench. That was my observation of the I game. I don't even know how that's possible. I don't really though. remember Nidalee or Ryze doing anything the moment that Ian fell behind, and then Beyond also died three times early. After tonight, the last champion I want to see is Nidalee. Just like, <laughs> shelve it, guys. Just give it to me next week. I just don't want to see that anymore. It is not working out. You know, I don't think Beyond's going back to the Nidalee well for game <laughs> two. And Kongdu, Don't monster. underestimate Beyond. He's done similar things before. Animated stuff for MVP, they're a proud team. They want to stay in the lead, they want to stay in the series, but it's going to be tricky. Let's see what they can do. We're going to do a quick break before Kong the Monster MVP Game 2.